What is up, Web3 developers? Welcome back to another Morales tutorial video in which we're going to look at how to authenticate users using a Web3 wallet to your application using the new Morales 2.0 authentication API. We're going to do this with a Next.js application and any crypto wallet such as MetaMask. But before we hit into the tutorial, let's look at why this Morales 2.0 authentication API is so powerful. So first of all, if you already have a Web2 application, you can now integrate Web3 logins using the Morales authentication API. Also, it's compatible with any tech stack. So like I said, it's an authentication API. So as long as you can call those endpoints, you're good to go and authenticate users with their crypto wallets. Of course, you, this means that you also control all the data. So after the user authenticates, you can save this data to your own database or whatever you want to do with that data. And best of all, it's compatible with already existing authentication standards like OpenID, OAuth, and so on and so forth. So a very powerful new feature with the launch of Morales 2.0 is this authentication API. Essentially, it's solving the Web3 authentication hassle. You don't have to redirect to any third parties. You don't need to understand Web3 authentication flows. You don't need to master varying wallet standards. It all comes pre-built with the Morales authentication ABI. And best of all, you don't have to constantly update and maintain all solutions. It's all updated for you on Morales side. So now let's get stuck in and get into the tutorial itself. Let me get my face away so we have a bit more real estate. And let's move over here to Visual Studio Code, where I have a repository called Morales Open in which we'll create our Next.js application. And why we're using Next.js is because it's essentially like React. Most people know how to use React, but it allows you to create your own backend within the same repository. So you have your front end and back end, and that's what we'll have in this project as well. We'll have a front end, client side, and then a back end in which you'll have your Morales functionality. Morales is a back end technology, which gives you a simple to use SDK, allowing you to connect, for example, to the authentication API. So all we'll have to do is in our Next.js front end, we'll have to make a post request to the Next.js back end, and our Morales SDK will handle our authentication in one single app. I'll show you how this works very shortly. But first, let's go ahead and install a starter Next.js project. Run npx create next app. You'll have to give your project a name. Let's call it Web3Auth. And beautiful, that's installed. And before we look at the repository, let's install all the dependencies we'll use. So you can go ahead and cd into the correct repository, web3auth, like so. And then run npm install Morales, which will give us access to the Morales SDK. Then next auth, which is an authentication handling package for Next.js. And then Axios, which will allow us to make the post request from our front end to the Next.js backend. Install those. Found zero vulnerabilities, create success for that. And then, of course, we'll need a Web3 library to access Web3 functionality like an integrated wallet in your browser. So for this, we're going to use a package called Wugmi, which is a Web3 library, and then Ethers as well, which is also a Web3 library. Install those. All right, great. Zero vulnerabilities for this as well. So now we have all the dependencies we need for this project. We can close this up and have a look at our Next.js repository. So if you're new to Next.js, you'll find all your files in this pages folder where you have the API. This is essentially your backend folder. So this is where we'll write all our backend endpoints and integrate our Morales SDK. Currently, there's just one endpoint, hello.js, which responds with a name called John Doe. Then everything outside the API folder, so just the pages folder itself, is your front end files. So the app.js just defines your application and then index.js would be just the front page of your app. There's a default app created over here. Now to just show you this front end functionality and the back end functionality, let's create a sample app very quick so you get a quick hang of what's going on. In your index.js file, let's go ahead and remove everything except the outmost divs and let's create a button in here like so. Button get name and then add a onclick event. Onclick will equal to a function called get name and then of course we have to create that function in this component over here let's go ahead and create a asynchronous function called get name like so and all this asynchronous function will do is call our next.js backend so this api folder and this hello.js endpoint and then console log the output so john doe so let's jump back into index.js and make a Axios request. First, we have to, of course, import Axios, like so, save that, and then make the Axios get request to our API endpoint. Do it like so. So we await Axios to get from our API slash hello route. So we have that API, our backend, and we look at the hello.js endpoint, and we get the response, and then we just console.log that response. Now, if we save this, we can whip up a development server of this Next.js project. So go in the terminal, run npm run 
dev and the client and server were successfully compiled they're found at localhost 3000 let's open a browser now and go to that site like so look at this localhost 3000 and we have one button called get name let's open up the console as well voila and now pressing the get name should make a call to our next.js backend and look at that we get the response with the data and in the data we have our name john doe so now you have a quick understanding of how our Next.js app works. Remember, so we have the pages folder where we have our Next.js app contained, and within it, we have the back end, so the API, and then the front end, which is all the other files outside of the API folder. And now we can go ahead and start creating our Morales project to authenticate a Web3 user using MetaMask. And of course, this tutorial is on the documentation side as well. The link is in the description, and there should be a message on the screen right now where you can find this tutorial as well. But without further ado, let's go ahead and close our terminal open up our app.js file again and start off with the front end portion of our build. So in this app.js file, just press command A and replace everything with what the tutorial on the documentation site has displayed in step four. So what we're doing here is we're only wrapping our app component with two providers, the Wagni provider and then the session provider for next auth. So this just allows us to use Web3 functionality from Wagmi. And then using next auth, we have a session provider, which helps us when we have our JWT token and a session going on, we can identify a user who has logged in to our application. So that's all you need to know about this. And it'll, you'll find it in the documentation. Now going ahead, we'll have two pages. We'll have a sign in page and a user page. Let's go ahead and create the sign in page first. Sign in .js. So essentially, this will be found from our route localhost 3000 slash sign in. So this is the page the user should be prompted to at the start and allow them to authenticate using their Web3 wallet. So let's paste in what we have in the documentation here as well and walk you through it. Radio. So this is from the documentation step seven. Let's look at the imports first. We get Wagmi, which allows us to connect a user to our application. And we also get the injected connector, which allows us to look at the browser and see which Web3 wallets have been connected. Then, of course, we destructure the connect async functionality from our use connect hook. And then we use it in our handle authentication function. We await for the connect async to handle with any injected connectors the browser has. And from that, we get the account address and the chain that the user has used to connect their wallet to the web page. We can then store this data into a object called user data, which will just console log at this point, but eventually we'll use this user data to make a call to our back end. But for now, this should be good. And we can go ahead and create the other page for our front end, which will be the user page. So after a user has logged in, they'll be directed to the user.js page. So this you can paste from step 11 on the documentation tutorial like so it's a long chunk and all we're doing is we're returning a div with a title user session and a chunk of code which has the user details within it and then of course a button to sign out but you'll notice we're using next auth in this component and at the bottom we're getting the server side props so if a user is signed in and they've already created a session token we'll get the user details from that json web token but if there is no session active we'll just redirect back to the sign in page so at this moment in time because we haven't created our back end logic to authenticate a user using the morales sdk we'll just be redirected to the sign in page whenever we try and go to this user page but now if we save and go check out our app this is the front end. So going to localhost 3000 slash sign in, you'll come to the Web3 authentication page. You can open the console again. Let's check out which MetaMask wallet we have connected. Look at this. We have account 10x4d2 not connected to this account. So let's press authenticate via MetaMask. MetaMask pops up. So we're authenticating using Wagmi. Let's press next and connect to this website. Look at this. We're console logged with our address. 0x42, and it looks like we were on the Polygon Mumbai testnet, so the chain ID is 80,001. And now this is just console log because this is just a front end application we've connected to the website. We haven't done any authentication, but next we'll go ahead and build the back end logic where we can use this connection to request Morales to send us a sign in message. And then after we sign the message, use Morales to verify that sign in message and create a authenticated user that will then direct us if we go to the user page which now just redirects us to the Web3 authentication page. All right, jump back into Visual Studio Code, go ahead and press API, and we can go ahead and just delete the hello.js file, delete that, and create a new folder within the API folder called auth. And we'll have our authentication endpoints in here. But before we head and do that, let's press package.json here just so we get into this folder and press create 
env.local. So we'll have to define a few environment variables with our Morales Web3 API key and a Next.js key just to keep our app safe. So let's paste those in over here. Rightio, so these details you can find in the documentation step three. And the Morales API key and next auth secret is something you'll have to keep secret to yourself. This just allows you to keep your app secure. There's also a documentation page showing you how to get a Morales API key. Find the link to that in the description below. But that's enough of that. Now let's go ahead and build our backend. So going into the api.auth folder, let's go ahead and create a file. So this is going to be our first endpoint we call from our front end called request slash message dot js excuse me i meant request dash message dot js after we connected our wallet in our front end so over here we've connected our wallet right like so we get this user data we'll use this user data to send a axios post request to this request message endpoint which is in our back end and use morales to send a message for the user to sign so let's see how we do this paste in the code from step five in the documentation where we only import morales we create a configuration object with a domain that's sending the request to sign a statement. So let's just change this to say, for example, web three auth, and then the URI that's sending the request and a timeout period. So this is your back end endpoint. You don't have to be a back end developer to know how to do this. All you have to do is from the front end, send a request with a address, chain and network. So this is what we already have. And then we await Morales to start with our API key we just set in our environment variables. And then we try to use Morales auth request message with these details in order to send to our front end a JSON message indicating the user to sign a Web3 signature with said Web3 auth message. So now we save that and we create another endpoint. So after the user signs the message, they'll have to do another endpoint call to authenticate. And for that, we'll use next auth. So let's create another endpoint over here. This will be funky naming as it's using next auth. So use square brackets within them, three dots, then type in next auth, get out of the square brackets and dot JS. The code for this, you can paste in from the documentation tutorial step nine, and it's a big chunk, but all we're using is next auth credentials provider and Morales to create a next JS authentication using Morales. All we're doing here is we're again awaiting Morales to start. And then we do a Morales auth verify with the message and signature, the user has already signed. And this gives us the user's wallet address and a profile ID, which we can then pass to a user object, including these variables and the signature they signed. We return the user and then we create a JWT session token, which then can be accessed from anywhere in our Next.js app, showing that we have an active session. Someone has authenticated with their Web3 wallet and we can get the user details from the session the secret JWT token, as long as you keep your keys from your environment variable safe, no one will be able to access these JWT tokens, and we can reroute to the user page. Now we just have to go ahead and jump into the sign in page where we have to make these calls to the endpoints we just created in our backend. So we could just add the endpoints over here. But because there's a lot of imports and other stuff we need to do, let's just select all of this and paste step 10 from the documentation tutorial into the sign in file and save that. So you notice we bring in sign in from next authentication. So this helps us call the endpoint we just created in this next auth.js file. Then from the Wagme package, we bring in use account, use sign message and use disconnect, which allows us to do loads more with our Web3 wallets on our web page and then use router from next router that will help us route to the use page. We just destruct all the functionality from the Wagme hooks and the next router. And then in our handle auth functionality, we first check if we already connected, we await for a disconnection, and then we go through with the functionality. We again do the connect to sync, where you use a MetaMask connector to connect our wallet to the web page. Then the user data we use to make a Axios post to API slash auth slash request message endpoint we have in here with the user data that includes the address chain and network. From that, we should receive a message from this first API call. Then on the front end, we can use the sign message functionality from Wagmi for the user to sign the message with the message detail sent for us from the Morales authentication API. And finally, let's just close this a little bit. We can make another endpoint call 
using the next authentication sign-in, which uses Morales Auth Verify endpoint in the SDK. So all we do is we pass the message that we just signed and the signature. Morales checks to see if everything's in order. And then if everything's in order, our callback URL is the user, which we destruct and then push using the React Router taking us to the user page. So all Morales functionality you really need to know over here is that we make this Axios post call to request a message from Morales from this file over here, request message, and then we use the sign in call to make a call to the next auth, which uses Morales auth verify endpoint to verify our signing in. And then we're pushed to the user page with the user details stored in the JWT token, the address profile ID and signature. It's a mouthful, but now let's go ahead and jump into Google Chrome and see how this works. So if we refresh the page, let's go ahead and disconnect our account just so you see the full functionality, disconnect this account. Perfect. Let's authenticate via MetaMask. Let's use account one again. Next, connect. Now we've sent a call to our Morales endpoint for requesting a message and the message is popped up for us for us to sign web three auth. Let's sign that. And there after we signed that message, we sent another request to sign in using next auth, where we use the Morales auth verify endpoint to verify our signing. And after that's right, we have the JWT token, including the address of the user who signed the message, and we create a profile ID and the signature hash as well. Of course, in this case, we only created a session here in Next.js, but you could have added anything to your own database, for example, a timestamp for logging in, anything you could think of. So this is how simple Morales makes Web3 authentication. Hopefully this video was informative for you and you got a lot of value from it. I'll see you in the next one.